Hi everyone, thanks for being here. Uh, I'm Alekos, I'm an uh, engineering intern at Blockstream. I don't actually work on Lightning, but I like Lightning myself, so I spend some of my personal time on that. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about uh, the plugin system, uh, which is pretty new to see Lightning, and it lets you create a lot of very cool stuff in very little time. Uh, I don't have that many slides, because I, it's actually just two. It's this one and then one at the end. Uh, most of my talk is going to be like live coding. I will try to write code in front of you, explain what I'm doing, and uh, you know, thing you should keep in mind if you want to do that yourself. Uh, and then I will have a little surprise uh, at the end, uh, which I, I, it's actually not a surprise already announced it on Twitter, but nobody follows me, so it's going to be a surprise for you. Uh, so let's begin. Um, I decided, uh, I had this idea laying in my, my mind of uh, writing a little system to do auctions or lightning. Uh, and I did the idea, but it was pretty hard to do without plugins because if you think about it, you want to do it in a kind of trustless way. Uh, so you need to, you would like to not steal money or not even have the possibility to steal money from people bidding at your auction. So um, in Lightning, you can today um, very easily reject payments without plugins. So it would be kind of a mess because you would need to receive a payment and then if another offer com comes in, you would need to refund the payment. And it's a huge mess. Uh, thank thankfully, with plugins, you can uh, basically change the behavior of Lightning D, of C Lightning, uh, and basically take the deci decision yourself that would normally be taken by C Lightning. And I will show you in a second what I mean. So I have this little project. It's already kind of done. Uh, I, I, will, I will not have time to do, that, to do all of that uh, live. So most of the web stuff, which are not really interesting for Lightning itself, are ready. And I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show how to like connect all the dots and integrate it with Lightning. So I will show you the code. Uh, we have this. Uh, it's basically a very small Node.js server. Uh, we have an index which is basically empty. Just create a web server, create a Lightning client, and start it. Uh, we have a JSON RPC library which we're gonna use later to communicate with C Lightning. It's also very very basic. Um, it's just read from standard input, write to standard output, parse JSON, and this kind of stuff. Uh, we have a web server, which is also very, very simple. Uh, we have a little node, um, node endpoint exposed just to see information about the node we are currently running. Uh, and we have a web socket endpoint, which we use to send live uh, data to the browser and to update the UI and do some fancy stuff. Uh, most of the code is actually in these last two files. Uh, we have the WebSocket file, which is, it's pretty long, but it's actually also very simple. Uh, it just, basically, it manages the communication with the browsers, with all the browsers connected. Uh, we send browsers things like, uh, oh, hey, a new offer came in, uh, you should update the little number uh, on the screen, uh, or maybe you should restart the timer, um, the, like the countdown before the auction ends, this kind of stuff. It's pretty long, I will scroll through it, but it's basically just we create, uh, up here we create a unique ID for each browser. Um, we basically immediately send the current status, so when a browser connects to our server, we immediately send them the current status, which could be there's an auction running, there's an auction which already ended, or we are waiting for it to start, this kind of stuff. Uh, whenever we receive a message, Obviously, we parse it and decide what to do. The only message we can receive is uh, an ask for an invoice, because a browser that connects to our website uh, wants an invoice to be able to participate to the auction. So when we receive an invoice request, we make an RPC call. This is the C Lightning RPC, so we call the invoice command. Uh, and one of the things that maybe you're not really aware of it uh, is that you can uh, create invoices without any amount. So normally you have the amount uh, embedded into the invoice, but you can also create invoices like that by saying any. So you create an invoice which is open and the sender can decide uh, how much money to send. Uh, we use the ID we generated previously inside to keep track of everything, the basic description, and we send the invoice. Um, then what do we have? Uh, we have some functions to clean stuff because we don't want to leak the ID of the client that uh, did the highest offer to the auction for privacy reasons. So whenever we have to send out the amount, to, we have, a, we have to like, broadcast the new amount, we only uh, 
uh, we only say the amount, the timeout, which is when this uh, offer expires. So if this timeout is reached, the auction is closed and, uh, and that's the winner. And also we just send a Boolean, which is, is it us or not? Uh, so that we can update the UI accordingly. So we color, uh, the amount is colored in green if it's your offers that you made through the browser. Otherwise, it's going to be colored in black. Uh, and I think this is basically it um, for the WebSocket part. Uh, now, the most like tricky, challenging part is what I call the engine. This is basically where it all happens. So this is where offers are received. We have some asynchronous stuff to make sure that uh, we don't, uh, you know, activate or accept more than one offer at a time. Uh, but after all, it's pretty simple if you're a bit familiar with JavaScript. Uh, we have a constructor. Uh, we can delay the beginning of the auction. So when you get to the website, it will say the auction is about to begin and there's a timeout. So this, is, this start time is actually that. Uh, we have this uh, current state, which can be waiting if we are before the starting time, running if we are running it, or done if, if it's done. Uh, this is the highest offer uh, at any given moment. Uh, and we're, this is just to delay the beginning. So we're going to say, uh, wait for now minus, oh, sorry, wait for the start time minus now seconds, and then uh, do begin. Begin is just going to say, make sure that we are waiting. We are not uh, messing up uh, with the <coughs> current state. And then emit an event that says, OK, we are running. Um, this is the code that is run when a new offer comes in. This is the trickiest part. So I'm going to probably slow down a little bit on that. Uh, first of all, we make sure that we are actually running the auctions. We cannot accept uh, offers otherwise. Uh, we make sure that the amount is higher than the previous amount, and not only higher, but also uh, that there's a at least a mean bump difference. Uh, this is because amounts are in millisatoshis. Uh, and it, I mean, you can imagine a very, very boring auction where everybody is raising by just one millisatoshi and it will like, go on forever. So we want to force people to not only just increase the amount a little bit, but increase it of at least uh, min bump, which is, I think, it's 100 millisatoshis now, but uh, it can obviously be changed. Uh, we register the new offer uh, right here, and we emit an event so that uh, everybody that is listening for this event can, I don't know, like the WebSocket can send uh, uh, the new offer to the UI so that it gets updated. <clears throat> and this is where we have a little bit of JavaScript magic. Uh, we have this asynchronous thing, which is returned. That can uh, It's a promise, and it can either be resolved or rejected. Uh, we resolve it if we reach the timeout uh, of this is this variable right here. Uh, it's uh, 30 seconds. So when you make an offer, we, uh, we wait for 30 seconds to see if there's somebody else which, is, uh, which wants to raise the offer or if you won. Uh, so if it's down here. Yeah. So this promise gets resolved if, you, if we reach the timeout uh, and this win function is run. Otherwise, we clear the timeout and we reject the promise. So we say, no, your payment is uh, not good. We, we got something better. Uh, try again. Uh, and then there are a couple of uh, the end function, which is run when the auction end, and some normal basic getters. So I went pretty fast through this. I, it was just to show what we have ready. Uh, now, this, the, the missing part is the part that actually receives payment. Because now we open a, uh, an RPC connection, but we're not waiting for invoices. We're not doing any of this stuff. Um, and what we would normally do here, it would be you, you would use maybe wait, uh, wait invoice. I think it's called the RPC. Uh, you would have something that runs whenever an invoice comes in, and, and you do some checks. Uh, but as I was saying before, the issue is that Lightning D uh, is behind your back accepting payments uh, automatically. So Lightning D is just going to notify you that you received the payment, but it's going to accept it. And you don't really want that. You want to, uh, because otherwise you would need to end the refunds. You, you would like to keep payments on hold for a while uh, and see what happens. Like, is there an, an higher offer coming in? Right, so I will reject this payment and accept the other one. Or maybe this is the highest offer. OK, I will accept it. So this is basically what I'm. Uh, what I'm going to code. Um, this is now a normal uh, node uh, project. You can uh, start it with like node index. Uh, it's, oh, Lightning is not running. Um, I have some aliases here. Uh, I will use this uh, 
uh, L1D no plugin. This is just lightning D network, uh, dash dash network test. Uh, I have L1D because I have actually three demos that I will use later for the little you know, demo at the end. We have the one which is the main uh, demon, which is the, the one which is hosting the auction. Then we have two and three, which uh, they both have a channel with one, and they are uh, users that are bidding to that. So we use this alias to start it up. And this is just a normal lightning uh, node. If we start that, uh, this is, let me add a debug. Uh, I think it's so that we can see some logs. Yeah. So this is just a web server running. We can connect to it on localhost 3000, but you can't really do anything. Uh, it's going to create an invoice because we are already handling it. So we connect uh, through WebSockets to, oh yeah, this is very small. Uh, yeah, maybe you can see a bit better. So this web page connects uh, through the WebSocket to the server, asks for an invoice, but then it's just stuck there. There's nothing else going on. Uh, so we're going to integrate a plugin to do what we described earlier. So we're going to integrate a plugin to wait for payments, basically keep them on hold, and then decide whether we want to accept it or not. Uh, we're going to follow the documentation on, uh, on the repository. I think, is it big enough for you down there? Can you see? All right. Um, so we're going to just scroll through that. Um, basically, what a plugin is is just something that is uh, executable. It can be a, like a proper binary executable. It can also be a script. Um, if you put this uh, thing up there, which I have no idea how to pronounce. I usually say shebang. I don't know if it, it, this is the right way. Uh, you're basically telling the OS what interpreter should be used to run this code. So you can, have, you can even have scripts like that. You can have best scripts, Python scripts, whatever. It's something that it's executable, uh, that Lightning is going to run when it starts. Uh, and then it's going to communicate with it um, a little through the uh, standard input and standard output of this uh, process. Uh, and it's basically going to do two things. First of all, it's going to ask, Lightning D will connect to our process and ask uh, for a manifest, which is just a description. It's a, basically an object, a JSON, that the, um, the plugin can use to tell uh, Lightning D what, what it wants to do, what it supports, uh, if it needs uh, some extra, uh, maybe some extra options. So you can ask Lightning D to read options for you so that you don't have to handle your own config files. Uh, you can ask Lightning D to add some more uh, RPC methods that are basically just sent straight to your plugin. Uh, we're not really going to use that because it's, I mean, we could, but uh, it's not strictly necessary. Uh, you can subscribe to some events. So you can say, you can ask Lightning D to get notified when one of these events happens. And you can also uh, register to hooks, which is not described in here. I think the documentation is a bit uh, old. But you can also have uh, uh, an array, which is called hooks. And this is what we're going to use, where you can say, OK, I want to uh, receive. Uh, hooks are a little bit different from notifications. They are kind of like notification, in a sense that you receive um, a spontaneous message from Lightning D when something happens. But the hooks uh, allow you to uh, also change the behavior of Lightning. So we can say, uh, I think it's documented down here. Uh, you can also basically reply to Lightning D and tell it what to do. So you could, for instance, say, when a peer connects, you can decide, do I want to have a connection with this peer? And if you don't want to, you can tell Lightning D to disconnect from it. Uh, when there's a DB write, you can do some stuff. Uh, when there's an open channel, when somebody tries to open a channel with you, you can decide if you want to reject this channel, for instance. And what you're going to do is this invoice payment. So we're going to say, when an invoice payment comes in, wait a while, don't accept it immediately. I will tell you what to do. And we can then decide if you want to actually accept it, just sending a, an empty object, or we could reject it by sending a failure code. So we could say, uh, we could tell C Lightning to reject the payment with that specific failure code. So now I'm going to go back. Uh, we have to implement this. So we have our index file right here. Uh, and we need to somehow connect to uh, Lightning D. So first of all, we're going to use the JSON RPC server. Uh, this is going to come in handy here, uh, which is, I think we are actually already, no, we're not. So we're going to create an instance of our um, JSON RPC server, which we use. Oh, no, it's up here. Yeah, we already have it. Uh, this is just the. Uh, basically an instance of this class that lets, you, lets us subscribe on, uh, on some events. Like we could subscribe on, uh, um, on when a specific message comes in. 
this is the part that up here calls our uh, functions when uh, when we get uh, val dot method uh, we're gonna emit this event and we can catch it on the other side so first of all the specification says that we receive uh, a get manifest so we have to handle the get manifest so we're gonna try to do that uh, so we can say server dot on uh, get manifest I'm gonna I like when I program to go like by iteration, so I'm not gonna write all of the code right now. I'm just gonna, maybe I will just say, right, when we uh, get manifest, I will just print it out, just to see what, what's coming in, and then we can move on. So let's say debug MSG, just to see what happens. Um, and also now I'm not gonna start the lightning like that, because this was the no plugin version. I will stop this. Uh, I will start it with the L1D, which is this. Uh, this command right here. It's basically, this is an env environment variable um, that we use to ask node to print debug, uh, uh, debug logs for this, uh, uh, this tag, basically. We're gonna still say light in the network rec test and we're gonna provide uh, the, the path to the executable. So if I start it with L1D, uh, oops, we also need to clean this up. Yeah, I think it's gonna crash many times, but sooner or later we'll get it working. So right here, this is uh, our, the, the log coming from our plugin. We received uh, the get manifest uh, request, which is this one. And the object we have, it's basically just a reply object. Uh, this is because our JSON RPC lib, uh, before sending out uh, an event, also adds this reply in here also adds this uh, reply function, so we can conveniently reply by calling a method on the object we receive. So the get manifest is actually not really, the lightning, uh, lightning is not really sending us anything, it's just telling us, give me the manifest so the object is empty, we only have this reply function that we can use to reply. So we're gonna reply, obviously. Uh, we're gonna copy the, um, uh, basically the template document that uh, we can see on the documentation. So this is their get manifest. I'm, uh, let's see. Actually, I think I could just rewrite it because we are gonna empty all of it. We're not gonna provide any options. We're not gonna provide any RPC methods. We're not gonna provide any subscriptions. So I think I will just rewrite it. Uh, so we're gonna say message.reply. Uh, it's options, none of them. Uh, RPC methods, none of them. Subscriptions. None of them, and we're, got, we're actually going to say we want uh, this hook, which is the uh, payment. Uh, let me see, invoice payment hook, right here. So let's see what happens now. Uh, if everything goes well, we should receive the next message, which is the init message, which means that Lightning uh, received our manifest, it parsed it correctly, and now it's ready to move on to the initialize phase. So yeah, I think yeah, this worked. We got the init message. Uh, in the init message, we get the lightning deal. So we, this is pretty cool. So we don't have to manually keep track of it. We just, lightning deal is gonna tell us uh, where uh, its lightning deal is and what's the RPC file that we can use to connect to it. So we're also gonna catch this event and actually connect to the uh, lightning deal. So we're gonna do something like uh, server on init. Uh, we have a message. Uh, I will just, once again, just print it just to see if everything is right. I will print uh, message dot, what is it? Message dot uh, uh, configuration dot lightning deer. Let's see. Configurations lightning deer. Let's see if this is right. Uh, no, it's not. What? Unexpected token. Did I forget to close some parentheses, maybe? Uh, where, where is it? 26. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I did that. So it's like that, right? Yeah, let's see. All right, so now it's stuck on the configurations. Cannot read probably light indeed of undefined. So let's print it out just the message. Let's see what's in there. So message is configuration, lightning deer. They made it, oh yeah, I said configurations. So 
let's see if this is okay. Yep, so our did it. I don't think it printed it, but it works, so I think this is okay. What's going on? And no, it's undefined. No, this is not okay. Lightning deer. What did I do wrong? Uh, Type with lightning. Yeah, I made a lot of type. Lightning, right? Let's see. Uh, all right, this is the lightning deer, and then there's the RPC file, so we're gonna uh, basically copy this. Uh, yep. RPC file. Let's see. All right, so we got both of them. Uh, we're gonna create an RPC connection. We have, I think, uh, yeah, we have the lighting client already imported up here. Uh, so we're gonna create a connection to that. So we're gonna do, uh, let's see. I think the lightning client library just wants the lightning deer. It doesn't really want that. So let's try with that. Uh, client, uh, new lightning client, yeah. No, let's do that, debug client. So let's see if this works. Yeah, I think it works. So we have a client. We can establish a connection with the client. Uh, now what we need to do is uh, start back up the web server um, we had here before and give him the client, the RPC client and the engine. And we also need to catch the uh, payment received, the invoice payment hook. So one thing at a time, I think I'm gonna, oops. I think I'm gonna create the web server down here. So this is like, oh, let me see, just a function, all right. Uh, we're gonna call our web server function, and we have web server, uh, the RPC is client, the engine is already created up there. This should work, I guess. And we should get a web server running uh, on our localhost 3000. Yes, it's working. So last thing left to do, and I think, yeah, I still have some time later. Uh, last thing left to do is to catch the invoice payment hook and do something with it. So we're gonna do once again server dot on, uh, it's, is it payment invoice? I keep forgetting, invoice payment, right. Invoice payment, uh, payment. I also, I'm just gonna log it because I don't remember what's inside. So let's log it and Hopefully I didn't make any typos here. Let's see. Uh, okay, so now we need to start, you know, making things a little bit more complicated. We need to spawn up some other nodes. I think I actually have, no, they're not running. I will just spawn them up right here, Lightning 2 and Lightning 3. And I have some other aliases like um, L2C, which is Lightning Cli of the second node, as you can imagine, and uh, L3C, which is the same thing for the third node. So we're gonna actually uh, make a payment and see what happens on our, uh, on our hook. We can go back to this page that generates an invoice for us. Uh, and then we can, well, right here, we can pay it. Uh, this is actually not gonna work like that because this is an open invoice, so you need to provide the amount yourself. We're just gonna pay like 100 millisatoshis. And this is what we get. And as you can see, uh, this terminal is like stuck there. <clears throat> this is because this is a nook, this is not a notification, so Lightning D is actually waiting for our reply to decide what to do with this payment. So we could say accept the payment or reject the payment, and in the meantime, this payment is still like uh, pending. So what we're gonna do, uh, we are not gonna take this decision right in this callback. We're gonna just give this payment to the engine, and the engine is gonna handle it by itself. So is gonna return this promise and then based on this promise, on, on the result, either if it gets resolved or rejected, we're either gonna accept or uh, reject the payment. Uh, I will just show maybe one little thing just to go step by step. So we are first, instead of just, instead of integrating immediately this engine thing, I will just show how to accept a payment. Uh, I think the documentation says that you should send an empty uh, object. So we could just say payment.reply empty object uh, with this, the payment should get, uh, should be accepted basically immediately. Let's see. Uh, I think it's not connected. Yeah, the payment got accepted. Uh, and the other way is to reject the payment. This is a bit trickier. 
So you need to provide a failure code. Uh, and the documentation is not really precise. So the documentation says you can check for a failure code in Bolt 4. So you go to Bolt 4. But actually, Bolt 4 defines the uh, failure codes on a protocol level. You actually need to tell C Lightning the failure code uh, for him, I think. Like the, the failure code that he's using inside to, um, to identify a particular code. So what I did was um, going into the Lightning sources. I think, if I remember right, the file is in uh, gen, uh, no, it's onion, no, uh, wire. Yeah, wire, gen, onion, wire. And this is where uh, all the errors are defined inside of Lightning D. So we're just going to pick one of these failure codes. I'm going to pick this last one because it's not an update failure code. The update failure code requires you to also send an update. So it could be like, this payment failed because the channel has been updated, and I will also give you the new status of the channel, and I don't want to do that. I just want to fail the payment, so I'm just going to use the wire expiry to file. It's just one random failure code. So if we send, instead of an empty object, if we send a failure code of 21, I think it was, yeah, uh, the payment should get rejected, like straight away. So we will first restart the node. Uh, we're going to get a new invoice from here, and we're going to try to pay this one. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, so L2C pay 100. The payment failed. So we have a way, and yeah, the message is not super clear. I think Lightning D tries to uh, find other routes and tries to remake the payment, but it's going to fail uh, every time, obviously, with the cold, uh, code of wire expired too far. So we have a way to accept, we have a way to reject payments. Now we have to integrate everything uh, and integrate it with integrate it with the engine, which decides, yeah, you can accept this payment because it was the highest offer, or no, you need to reject it. So we're going to uh, remove all of that. Uh, yeah. So uh, first of all, maybe we should check that we are actually running, so that uh, if we are either waiting for the auction to start, or it's already ended, we are just going to reject the payment. So we could say, I think we have a, a get state method on the engine. Yeah get state, so we are just going to say if uh, uh, engine.get uh, state uh, it's different from running, we are just going to reject it straight away because we don't want to accept payments when we are not uh, running an auction. So it's going to be payment.reply uh, uh, failure code 21. Maybe I should, uh, I don't know, define a function or something, but just going to keep repeating it. Uh, then we need to decide whether the payment is good or not. Uh, and to do that, we have the engine uh, up here. No. Uh, it's this engine new offer. So we're going to provide the, uh, the amount of the new offer, the ID of the browser doing the new offer, and it's gonna, the engine is going to do its magic. So, uh, oh yeah, one thing. We don't have access to the ID of the browser right here. So we should actually wrap this. Uh, into, uh, let's see, into our web socket. Uh, let me see. I think I changed something from the last time, but uh, our web socket should, let's see. Oh no, yeah, we have the ID. The ID is actually the label of the payment. Now I remember. Um, let me see back from the log up here. Uh, this is the object we receive uh, from, uh, from Lightning D for the payment. This is the ID of the browser that made the payment. So we, we actually have it. Uh, we're going to use the key payment. Uh, it's payment uh, label and payment uh, pre image. We don't want it. Uh, it's payment label and payment MSAT uh, that we are interested into. So first I'm going to just parse the amount because it's uh, it gets sent with this msat suffix that we don't want. So I think we're going to do something like uh, parse uh, int uh, payment dot uh, payment dot amount, right? Payment dot payment dot msat dot msat uh, dot replace. We need to uh, we need to remove the msat suffix msat with nothing. Uh, this should work. Let me print it out. Uh, let's debug amount. Uh, and then we're going to give that to the engine. So we're going to say engine dot, I think it's new, 
uh, new offer. So it's engine a new offer amount uh, and it's uh, payment dot payment dot label for the ID. This is gonna return a promise, so this can either get resolved uh, in a good way and we accept the payment, which is payment dot reply uh, empty object, or this could get rejected. Uh, and in this case, we have to reject the payment. Payment dot reply uh, failure code 21. I think I'm kind of running out of time, so hopefully this works almost straight away. Uh, yeah, let's see, let's start it up again. No, it didn't work. So once again, I think missing argument. What did I do? Oh uh, yeah, I'm missing a parenthesis here. Uh, I can also close this one, don't need, don't need it anymore. Uh, okay, it started, let's try to make a payment. Uh, so theoretically, uh, also let's see some other parameters. So we are uh, giving new date as a start date. So we are not waiting for any period of time. We're gonna immediately start the auction straight away. So the first payment should uh, get received, should be kept on hold for as long as uh, no, more, uh, no more other payments with an higher amount comes in. So we're gonna try to send a payment with both uh, the client number two and the client number three. And uh, first of all, the, let's say client number two is gonna, keep, is gonna be kept on hold. Then when a new payment comes in from, lighting, from client number three, it's gonna get the payment from client number two is gonna get rejected and the payment from client number three is gonna get, be kept on hold, if it makes sense. So we're gonna create two invoices actually because we are two client this time. Uh, this one is for, oh, maybe I should. Yeah, let's do that faster. So this is for client number two, number two, let's say. So this is L2C, pay this. It's gonna pay 100 mil satoshis to kickstart the auction. And this is green because this comes from this web browser. Uh, so now client number three can try to outbid him by making another payment uh, of an higher amount. And this made the first payment fail. And this is now the highest bid and it's gonna be kept on hold for a while. And you can, go, uh, you can go on for a while like that. Whenever a new payment comes in, the other one uh, is gonna get rejected. Uh, and theoretically, after 30 seconds, I think, let me see the code. After 30 seconds, uh, the highest payment should be accepted. So if everything goes well, if you wait for a while, this should be accepted. Uh, otherwise, I think we might have missed something. So let's wait for a second and see what happens. Uh, or maybe we could just check the code and see uh, into the engine, a new offer. Uh, let's see. So we do have the timeout. So yeah, it should. Oh yeah, the payment got accepted. So it was just, yeah, it was 30 very long seconds. Uh, and for some reason, the timeout, there should be a timer ticking on screen, which for some reason didn't work, but it's not essential, it's just to you know, get some more details about what's going on. So I think I ran out of time, so I'm just gonna wrap it up real quick. Uh, this was just the demo on how to do something like that. Uh, I would like to do something a bit cooler and also potentially more riskier tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I wanted to actually run uh, one of these auctions with this software. Uh, so this is the node I'm gonna use if any of you in is interested in participating. Uh, the details are, uh, all the money I'm gonna uh, raise with this auction are gonna be donated to some charity. I made a poll on Twitter. Uh, I think the charity one was the Tor project. So all the money that we are gonna receive tomorrow uh, with the auction are gonna be donated to the Tor project. And we have a t-shirt, um, like the winner of this auction is gonna win a t-shirt. It's gonna be like this one. I think it's a bit unique because as far as I know, it's not on the website, on the store. So there's really no way to get one. I don't know, maybe you can correct me. But you will need to either bribe a Blockstream employee or win this auction. So you have a, a, an incentive to participate. Uh, it's a size M, I think. So if somebody wins from the audience here, I will just gonna give it straight to you. Uh, I would also like to live stream it and Fulmo is okay with that. So maybe tomorrow afternoon we will do the live stream uh, so that also people can participate from home. Uh, well, in that case, I will just ship it to them, obviously. So yeah, tomorrow afternoon, uh, we don't really have a time yet. We will probably write it down on the 
uh, bar camp thing. I will also tweet it if you follow me on Twitter. Uh, we can do this auction and try to uh, raise some money for Tor. And that's it. Thank you.